Today in math, we are continuing to work in the multiplication and division strategies unit for fifth grade. You've been working diligently on dividing using arrays and friendly numbers that you can decompose those larger numbers into. We're gonna continue using these friendly numbers and, under, and the understanding of multiplication with division as we move towards today's learning target. Today's learning target states, I can solve division problems with three and four digit dividends and a one digit divisor using partial quotients. You learned the partial quotients method last spring, so we're gonna review it today so that you feel confident in using this method. Remember that a dividend is the number being divided, the divisor tells us the number of parts that it's being divided into, and the quotient tells us the number within each part. In this example, there is the, the variable n because we do not have the answer and n represents the unknown number. So your dividend goes inside the box, kind of like your array. So it's the number we are dividing. So I typically write dividend and say divided by the divisor. So this is the number we're dividing into the number of groups based on the divisor. For partial quotients, we will have a vertical line as indicated so that we can separate our partial quotients and keep our work organized and make sure you have plenty of workspace work to share your thinking and your ideas about multiplication facts. So we have the multiplication, excuse me, the division problem, 924, and we are dividing it into groups of seven. So for example, if we had 924 pages to read in a book study, and we want to read the same number of pages every day for seven days, we would divide it into groups of seven to figure out how many pages we would read each day. So we divide it up, 924 divided by the divisor seven. I have my vertical line to separate my partial quotients. I'm gonna use the friendly numbers and my understanding of multiplication to help me determine how many groups of seven can go into 924. I see it's in the, seven, in the hundreds, so I know that seven times 100 equals 700. So I know there's at least 100 groups of seven in 924. So I can take 700 out because we've already grouped them into groups of 100. and there's 224 left to be divided into groups of seven. So how many times does seven go into 224? I know that seven times three is 21. So seven times 30 is 210. And that's a friendly number to get me close to 224. So I know that there's at least 30 more groups of seven that we can create. That leaves us with 14. And we can divide 14 by seven with two more groups. And now all of our pages have been divided and we can see by adding up our partial quotients, just like you did in your arrays, we get 132 pages per day. So, this is neat and organized. Sometimes if you are adding or, you're num or you have more numbers, it could be beneficial to rewrite your partial quotients in um, to make sure that your place values are lined up to double check that your addition is correct. I want you to recognize that when we talk about friendly numbers, the friendly numbers are what are friendly to you as the mathematician. So here I used 100 and then I decided to use 30. But in this example, perhaps I didn't remember seven times three and I wanted to use seven times two instead and went to seven times 20, which gave me 140. So instead of using 30, I broke it up into two parts of 20 and then 10. This is also friendly for this mathematician. So both of the answers are the same. The process is the same. The friendly numbers have been adjusted to match the um, 
the numbers that are the facts that are uh, friendly and comfortable for that mathematician. All right, we're now gonna use a four digit dividend and divide again by a single digit divisor. So we have 4,572. We're gonna set up that dividend, the number we're dividing. We're gonna divide it by groups of six. So we're setting it up the exact same way. We just have a four digit dividend instead of a three digit. Make sure you have that vertical line to organize your partial quotients. How many groups of six can we make out of 4,572? So thinking again of my multiplication facts and friendly numbers, I can think, well, it's already in the thousands. I could do six times a thousand, but that equals 6,000, which is way too big. I know my math facts of six times seven. So six times seven is 42. Therefore, six times 70 is 420. And six times 700 is 4,200. So I know there's at least 700 groups of six that we can create. And that's gonna leave me with 372 left over that we still need to put into groups of six. I'm thinking to my math facts of the sixes, six times six is 36, therefore six times 60 is 360. So there is at least 60 more groups that we can create. And there's my friendly number of 360. That leaves me with 12 left to group, and I know that we can create two groups of six and, and uh, group the last 12. So just as we do in the arrays, we have our partial quotients. We will then um, take the sum of those partial quotients to get a final answer of 762. Again, this is, um, nice and neat today, but some days it is not, or if I have to carry often, um, it is helpful to rewrite your partial quotients and then to add to double check your work. Once again, let's look at how we can use different friendly numbers. So in this example, I use 700, but you can also break that down to 500 and 200. So again, whatever friendly numbers work for you, this can work in the partial products method. Instead of 60 and two, this example shows 50 and 12. Both methods show the answer of 762. Both methods are partial products. However, the choices of how we grouped them along the way were based on our confidence and friendly numbers confidence in our math facts and knowledge and friendly numbers. So as you are working today, you will be dividing numbers that have three or four digit dividends. You'll be using a one digit divisor and you will be using this partial products method. As you are working on your own, if you need extra support, please watch the video again and stop and rewatch as needed. And if you still need support, please reach out to your teacher.